don't know about you, but sometimes when I walk into a store, I've got to look down for a minute and make sure I'm still wearing pants. Maybe I'm an asshole. It's possible. It's possible that I'm an asshole. There's a slight possibility, a margin for error. Wait, there's no margin for error, so I should have marked the line. Well, if I get down in here and take a look at it, now I'm trying to hold it up with my right hand and then switch to my left hand, I'm gonna have to mark a line. Sometimes, I spend a considerable amount of time wasting my time. What is your problem? What the fuck is your deal? Fuck, you gotta have such a hard time with everything. It's just a sway bar. Just weld it on. All right, I'm gonna weld it on now. All right. Now that my sway bar is tacked in place, I can wander around and assess the damages. all that I can see right now, it's going to work. Now I got the plugs pulled out of the steering cylinder. Um, sway bar links are all tacked to the rear. Sway bar's in the front, right? I want to make sure that when my front end turns, that my tie rod don't bump into nothing here. So I'm going to turn the steering wheel. Ah! Oh, my chair broke. I wasn't sure if it broke or fell over, but I landed on my ribs. <sighs> that was fun. Oh. That was my favorite chair. Oh well. I'm throwing the fire now. Okay. And just like that, we can turn. Why did it turn all the way? What's going on over there? got some mounts to weld up on the frame and the axle. I've just got to do a little bit of math, so come along with me and here's how we'll do it. You know, I always break these. No matter where I got my limit straps from, I always broke them and tore them up. I could double them up, triple them up, I'd break them every time. I ended up just putting like uh, hoist straps, like lift straps from the, from the crane store. And there's no metal. They don't have any. I built my own one time I built my own limit straps. I bolted a half inch, bunch of half inch bolts going through the, the, the straps into the plates. I always broke the bolts, broke the plates, ripped the straps, ripped the bolts out of the straps, ripped the plates out of the straps. I could never win. I put a half inch chain on there. I broke that. I broke everything. Some people, you go up and they got three eighths chain on their truck as limit straps and it works. I don't know why, but it never worked for me. Anyway, I'm putting these store-bought store -bought straps on this truck. I think I'm going to buy four more and double them up because uh, I'm having a little bit of nightmares of them breaking and then ripping these shocks apart. But what are you going to do? All right, here we go. And, of course, a stock vehicle just uses the shock as the limit strap. So then it's like, well, why not? But stock vehicles. You know, sometimes stock vehicles will impress you how much of a beating they'll take. But they all die in the end. Anyway, we're not building a stock vehicle. My name's not Jimmy Durr. Yes, it is. Okay. 17 and a half inches. That's the length of my limit strap. Let's mark that down here. 17.5. These are an inch and a half. My tape measure is half worn off. Is that a half inch? Let's put it over here. If we start at three and we make it to four and a quarter, they're an inch and a quarter. An inch and a quarter. 1.25 times two is two and a half. 
So we got 17 and a half and two and a half is 20. Now we've got 20 inches from bottom of the mount to bottom of the mount. And that's extended. My shock is extended eight inches at the moment. That means there's four more inches in there, but we don't want to use all four inches before the limit strap gets tight. We want that limit strap to get tight at about two inches before max because your axle's gonna do this. Things are gonna stretch, the strap's gonna stretch. We don't ever wanna overextend our shock. So given all that accounting of two inches, our shock's only two inches extended. So 20 minus two is 18, 18, and we want to be 18 inches. So we're looking for 18 inches here. If we go on the bottom of the frame to the axle, it's 17 inches. So if we come down onto the face of the axle, will that interfere with steering? No, it doesn't seem likely that it will. If it ever did, it would happen when the suspension was bottomed out and the steering's turned. There's not a whole lot of stuff to catch on. I think it'll be okay. You can always use a bungee cord and tie your limit strap somewhere. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. I tend to break everything, but this will be okay. So we're gonna sneak it right in here, I think. Sometimes I never really thought that I was going to get to this point, but eventually if you keep moving, you do get to these points, and the point I'm at now, I'm considering the suspension basically done. I'm still missing drive shafts, and I still might add some tubing places. I mean, the more I look at stuff, the more weak points I find. I stick a pipe in there, stick a pipe in there, put some plate over here, but considering it about done. So what do I do next? Well, I'm getting ready to stuff a motor in here. But I want to clean the firewall up and get some paint on it. That way I don't have to cover up the motor. I can, well, I might still have to cover it up. Anyway, next thing I'm going to do is go around the whole truck and find any little bits of spatter and some stuff that's in my way. i got to clean that off. Then, I'm going to sandblast the underneath the body. Then I'm going to pull all the link arms off, take all the bolts out, take everything back off, and spray paint on the frame, the axles, and the underneath of the body. And all the other stuff that I took off. I'm just going to paint that separately. Then I can put the whole thing back together, and hopefully this will take less time than it takes to talk, for me to talk about it. It's probably not likely. <laughs> Yeah, just to go get coffee, that's all. <laughs>